and said, you learn life of the Buddha. What do you know? What do you know about the life of the Buddha? You know that he saw four signs, eh? old man, sick man, dead body and monastic. When he was going out to the pressure garden, he saw these four and went out there. That's all you know. But that's not correct. That's not correct. And also, he could do that sort of regular story, standard story. When he was going with uh, Channa, his driver, horse driver, he saw an old man and he was bending and you know, trembling and walking. Siddhartha Channa, Channa? Why that man is going like this? Why? Channa said, Your Majesty, there's an old man. That is how old people walk. Body is not strong. I told them, Channa is the one who should attain enlightenment. But Channa knew answer to every question. Siddhartha was just like a baby. No, nothing. Do you think such a person can attain enlightenment? Siddhartha said, it is mentioned in books, real books. Those are Buddhist literature, novels. You can write beautiful novels on the life of the Buddha. I am telling you the truth from the literature Buddhist text. In Anguttara Nikaya, it is recorded, I had three palaces, one for winter, one for summer, one for rainy season. Each palace has a garden. It has a pond. Each pond has different type of lotus. Blue lotus, red lotus, white lotus in each. And I spent as much time in that palace until the whole season. I was staying in, in, in upstairs in my comfortable section. Entire palace is my palace. I have not, there was not one single male. All oh, 15, 16 year old beautiful girls. All were taking care of me. I never use any cloth other than the Benari silk. Benari silk is supposed to be the softest, the most expensive silk in India. Other than that, I never wore anything else. Even my servants, slaves, in other families, slaves are given very third class clothes, third class food, third class uh, apartment outside, you know, with horses and you know, these uh, ticks and uh, so forth. My servants stayed in a very beautiful apartment, all furnished. They ate the same kind of food that I ate. Even my servants are like that. And then, next time Siddhartha was going out and according to the novel story, he saw a sick man, you know, he had a lot of uh, boils on the skin. He was, he was, you know, crying in pain because Siddhartha was standing Eh, Why would that man is like that? Sanna says, Sir, he is a sick person. Ah, oh, this is how the sick person means? Again I say, Sanna should have had any letter to do with any of the answer. Siddhartha did not know. 
when he saw the dead person people in india you know even now when somebody dies they take two pieces of sticks and put little other cross bar and put the body there cover it with a piece of cloth and within 24 hours take it to a burning place near the river that's what we call in modern terms crematorium put there put everything down and take a uh, few more wood pieces of wood put some uh, cow dung dry cow dung and pour a little water a little uh, oil and burn <coughs> when it is burned then turn it over half man body and burn a little more and then throw to the river and there are big fish they take care of the rest of the body even today that's what they do so siddhartha going to the palace what he called pressure garden he saw body was being taken like that then again he asked channa what is this he said oh, that is called death hmm. that's how he left But Siddhartha says in the Angutra Nikaya, with all this pleasure, all this comfort, all this beautiful music, beautiful girls dancing, singing, as much pleasure I want, I had it, while enjoying all this. I thought, I thought, this is just empty. This has no pleasure. This ends. He saw his mother, his stepmother, Mahapajapati. He is a baby, Mahapajapati is a grown-up woman. He can see the difference between these two. Siddhartha is a genius. Genius doesn't need too many things to click his wisdom. He immediately saw, this is life, this is, this is just a waste of time. No peace, no pleasure, no happiness. He says, while parents were crying, he left home. The novel says, he ran away in the middle of the night while everybody was sleeping. Siddhartha says, I left home while my parents were crying, asking me not to go. Mm. My wife was crying, though she just had a baby. My parents were crying. My father had a big plan for me to become his successor, to make, him know, to make me his successor. He had a big plan for me. Country, all these people in the countries had plans in their mind for me. But I thought, all oh, these are getting into trap problems. I don't want to stay here, I want to go, run away. That's why he, ran, he left home while they were crying. That is the true story. <clears throat> to add to this, Jasodhara, his former wife, was not dropped from the sky. She was a woman, a girl, born in that area, grown there. She knew everything about Siddhartha. When Siddhartha was born, so astrologers came and predicted his future and they said, Kundanya particularly said that he will be a monastic. Yahudhara knew that because whatever happens in the family, in the in the palace at Greenfield, when Elizabeth's grandchild had the cold, the whole world knows. 
Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, grandchild, has called. Likewise, some anything happens to the uh, to a child in royal family, everybody knows that. Yes, so that I knew that that he was born to become enlightened person. According to the stories, Asita from Himalayan came and saw his signs and said, he will be a Buddha. And when he was young, father being a farmer, although he was a king, kings took leadership in farming. They did not live in White House. They came down to, down, came, what do you call, uh, down, meet, met with people and work with them. When he was having this festival, he, his the girl, girls or nurses who took care of Suddhartha's little boy took the fe plugging festival and put him under a tree, rose apple tree, and then all joined the festivities. This child started meditating. It was a miracle that child is meditating. Yes, I knew that. Yes, I knew even this boy, the one I married, was like that. She knew everything about Siddhartha. Yasodhara thought, he is not born to be my husband. He is born to be a Buddha. Even after marriage, when they were together, she saw him sitting in a quiet place and meditating. So she knew everything about him. And probably she might have told him, darling, I don't know the language they might have used, I know you are not born to be my husband. I know you are born to become a Buddha. I want you to be happy. I don't want you to be miserable going against your will. But before you leave, give me a child so that when you leave, I can look at the child and be happy thinking of you. So Siddhartha agreed to do that. He did that. Child was born and said, now you go to a wish. Go to the child. Give the child. Off I go. It's a very natural story. I told, I started telling these people, they became so interested. <laughs> they had never heard that side of the life of the Buddha. That's why I was asked to give afternoon talk also. Hmm. Even Sinhalese Buddhists who were born into Buddhist family don't know the, even the life of the Buddha, let alone Dhamma. <laughs> I think that's enough. Thank you, Bhatiji. Thank you.